Good morning, fellas. Welcome to our first ever edition of our... What the f*** are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Stab. Yeah, I don't know what that was, but uh, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is DM here from the Spoiler Alert Network, here with Showtime. And this is our first ever top five discussion video. We're going to be picking a topic, and we will be ranking our top five choices from that topic. And today's first topic is still in the realm of video game content, and it will be our top five Assassin's Creed games. Assassin's Creed is a video game series which was very popular when it came out. Uh, it was actually one of my favorites back in the day when I first started playing it after the first and second, first three games uh, I picked up on it and it became my favorite series as a whole just story wise and gameplay wise it was just it was something different for me and I mean I even got myself tattooed here so I mean obviously I was pretty passionate about it back in the day I got my nifty little coffee mug, Assassin's Creed coffee mug here but anyway, today we're going to be ranking our top five picks for our favorite Assassin's Creed video games, and we're going to be going back and forth talking about uh, each of our picks and why we chose them, and maybe our choices will be a little bit different from each other, but that's the fun of it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Showtime. I'll let you go ahead. All right, my number five is Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I really enjoyed Black Flag, and it was the first game that was on the newer edition consoles, Xbox One and PS4, and it really showed off the capabilities of the newer consoles with all of the, the graphics increase from the previous games and the, um, the effects of like the water and stuff with all the uh, ship battles that you could do, and Black Flag was based around the uh, pirate culture. And it was just an interesting look into that lifestyle. And I really enjoyed Black Flag, but the reason why Black Flag is only number five for me is because of the way they continued with the present day story as opposed to the past story when they left the Desmond character behind in his death in the previous games. He, the new story just didn't interest me as much the gameplay was still fantastic, and that's why I, it makes my list. But the the present day story just wasn't there for me. And I'm curious how you feel about it. See, it's a little different for me. Um, I agree on most of those points, but my number five would have to be the most recent one I played um, at the time of this recording. It was uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, and the main reason I rank it at number five is just it was the first title to completely revamp the combat system and the leveling system and it a lot of people say it was a uh, kind of a mashup of uh, the Witcher 3 and the Elder Scrolls series it kind of incorporated a lot of elements from that it was more of an RPG style game with the combat and leveling system and the story was pretty good. Um, I haven't finished all the way through it yet, but I know enough to where it's it's good enough, in my opinion, to make this list. I have not played Odyssey yet. Uh, I heard it was okay, but the story was meh. And I just, overall, I'm not a fan of uh, the modern-day, present-day storyline in any of the games, but we'll get back to that later. And... That's really it, just the whole revamp of the combat system. Just It was something different, it was something new, it was pretty fun. So that's why I made my list. Next up, I'm going to say my number four is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I really liked Brotherhood, and at the time it was my favorite. But looking back on it now, it wasn't... It wasn't as good as I gave it credit for. It was still really good, but some of the games were just better. And Brotherhood continued Ezio's story from Assassin's Creed 2. 
and uh, it introduced the mechanics of having assassins as part of a guild and using them to complete missions outside of your actual gameplay. And everything, <clears throat> everything about the mechanics for that game was really good. I'm not really sure why I didn't like it as much as I like the others, but I just didn't. But I still think it's a really good game, and I would rank it number four. Okay, I, I can see that. Uh, now, my number four uh, is a game in the series that didn't get a whole lot of credit for... I mean, it was kind of underrated. Uh, that would be Assassin's Creed Rogue, and it's basically... Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, it's rebranded. Um, same gameplay mechanics, just a little bit of tweaks here and there. It released around the same time as Black Flag and um, introduced a new protagonist. He started out in the Assassin Brotherhood and eventually through several circumstances he changed sides and became a Templar. And it through the whole series up until this point, we were made to believe that the Templars were the bad guys. They were in the wrong. But this paints a new gray area for who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, because it shed a new light on some of the motivations of the Assassin Brotherhood. Um, maybe not as a whole, but some of the uh, branches of it, I guess you could say. But overall, it didn't introduce a whole lot of new gameplay mechanics. It improved a little bit on the naval combat system of Black Flag, but it was it was pretty similar, and it overall it played exactly the same, but it was a whole new story and it was a whole new take on the struggle between the Assassins and the Templars. So I think that was pretty cool. Uh, I do wish they kind of would have differentiated um, the combat, like you still utilize tools that Assassins would use as the main character, and I mean. I would have liked to see some difference between the Templar and the Assassin fighting style, but it is understandable since he did come from the Assassin Brotherhood and became a Templar. So that's that's my number four, uh, just because of the new take on the storyline of it. That's kind of what made it onto this list for me. My number three is going to be Assassin's Creed Three which I really thought was one of the best games gameplay-wise. I think it introduced a lot of fun elements with the hunting animals and stuff and the Native American uh, history that was on display with the main character, Connor. And it was the finale for the Desmond storyline in the present day, which was, I think, the overall theme of the first what, four or five games. I think that the addition of using a bow in Assassin's Creed 3 was fun, and Assassin's Creed 3 added new, uh, newer stealth mechanics. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I think... Oh, and Assassin's Creed 3 also introduced the naval battles, I believe. Yeah, it did. And uh, that, that was, was a, a theme continuing forward afterwards. And everything about... Uh, Everything about Assassin's Creed 3 was just pristine gameplay. The only reason that it's not higher on the list is because, like, the, the inner past story just doesn't, doesn't grab me as much as some of the other games do. That's the only knock that I have on Assassin's Creed 3. Otherwise, it's one of my top games of all time. Uh, I have to agree with you. My number three is also Assassin's Creed 3. Um... Pretty much the same reasons. It introduced actually a new combat system compared to the other previous games. It introduced a new protagonist. Uh, it's actually a game a lot of people ragged on. Uh, they didn't like it as much. I don't know why. It was Maybe it was the storyline, the new protagonist, because everybody was so used to the uh, trilogy that featured Ezio, which is a fan favorite character. Most people gravitate toward him when they are asked who their favorite character is in the series. And uh, like he said, it did wrap up the Desmond storyline in the present day, which this is where the present day storyline was lost for me. Uh, I kept up on it. It was 
cool how it tied into the rest of the series beforehand. And then when it just kind of ended his arc, that's when it lost me. Uh, because this story had been building up to this moment in the present day that was going on in the storyline. And it was done. And then the rest of the present day story just kind of felt bland to me. I didn't, uh, I didn't really care about it as much. Um, but, like you said, the new mechanics for gameplay, the new protagonist, which I was actually pretty interested in. It was a Native American turned assassin after circumstances, and I'm a big American history nut and just things like that. The American Revolution, uh, that whole war, that whole conflict shaped the founding of the United States, and that's just a cool time period to go back and explore. You have a lot of cool events uh, that actually transpired in real life. Just tweaked it. They kind of threw characters from the series into it. And like Connor, I, it was never a real person. Things like that. But you meet George Washington when he was a general. Just things like that. Just the storyline of that was pretty cool. And uh, like you said, the hunting element is the first game to feature the hunting side of it. And the crafting and naval gameplay which was became a fan favorite and people wanted more of it they wanted more so the next uh the next outing for assassin's creed focused heavily on that black flag it was all about naval combat but i agree uh assassin's creed 3 was pretty good and, and the reason it's not higher on this list is because there were a few that i just overall looking back i liked a lot better but it was a great game which is an unpopular opinion i don't see why it gets as much hate as it does Next up is number two. My number two is going to be Assassin's Creed Revelations, which wraps up the Ezio and Altair storyline, both both uh, characters from Assassin's Creed One and Assassin's Creed Two, and the completion of both of their storylines is just a really, really great way to wrap up both characters. I really thought everything about Revelations was perfect. I thought it was a great way to send off both characters. I thought it was a good continuation of the present day storyline with Desmond and the present day assassins. I thought everything about Revelations was just pristine. And I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Okay, so number two for me um, would be, it's a little different, uh, Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. Uh, that's got to be my number two pick because it took the combat style, the gameplay style of Assassin's Creed 3, improved on it, it featured a whole lot more naval combat, a whole lot more exploration. You were The whole setting was the West Indies, and you could go... You could travel by ship to all the islands everywhere. There was it was a prequel to Assassin's Creed Three, which is kind of odd because they kind of jumped around in the timeline a little bit. Which I mean, that's fine. Uh, but they improved on the combat and uh, the character of Edward Kenway, which is Connor from the previous game's grandfather, and he was living the pirate lifestyle. He was a privateer before. He wanted more. He was out for himself. He just wanted to make the gold and, you know, just spit it all on lavish lifestyle, women, wine, you know, typical pirate stuff, but uh, he became another fan favorite. He's my second favorite character in the series. He, it was pretty great. The storyline overall was, uh, was kind of slow paced for me in particular, but it was good nonetheless. You get to meet historical pirates, uh, Blackbeard being the most... Uh, most iconic. Overall, it was a great game. It brought back the hunting and crafting mechanic, but it wasn't as fun as shooting with a bow. You had to use your pistols or whatever you had, but that's one of the biggest complaints I have about it as far as that aspect of it. But gameplay-wise, it was great. The uh, modern-day stuff introduced a new faceless protagonist uh, who didn't talk, just your typical just silent strong silent character and it just didn't click for me the way Desmond did. You can't follow that modern day storyline. It 
There's no fun. You're working for Abstergo, which is the modern day Templars. You're working for Abstergo Entertainment, which is a video game uh, company, and you're using the device, the Animus, which allows you to view uh, memories from people's DNA, their ancestors, and you're using that to create video game uh, content. So, I mean, that was cool. It was a cool concept, but uh, just the whole modern day storyline, it lost interest for me uh, after Desmond, like, after his story arc ended. So that's where it kind of lost me. That's one of my biggest complaints of 4. I think we're going to move on. We're going to reveal our number one picks. But first, I have to give some honorable mentions to the series. Uh, my first one being Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Which, it was alright. Um, I like the time period. I like some of the gameplay mechanics of it. Uh, it's set in London during the uh, Industrial Revolution. You play as uh, siblings who are already in the Brotherhood. They're already established assassins. Jacob and Evie Fry. You can switch between the two and each of them have kind of their own story-based missions uh, going through it. And it was just a pretty fun game. It wasn't perfect, but kind of took the mechanics of uh, came after Unity and it kind of went back to the formula people complained a lot about Unity and it kind of went back to the formula that they used in previous games and kind of tweaked them a little bit but it was a fun experience but the biggest honorable mention I have to give has to be the, the one that kicked off the entire franchise Assassin's Creed 1 which introduced the main character in the modern day Desmond Miles as he was born into the Assassin's Brotherhood, but he didn't want that life, so he escaped. He changed his name, he went on the run, he became a bartender, then he was picked up by the evil company Abstergo, who was a front for the Templar Order, and they experimented on him by throwing him in the machine known as the Animus, where they can take the DNA of your... You can see their ancestor's memory through DNA. And that's what kicked off the whole franchise. He explored the life of his ancestor, Altair, which he is a uh, big reason for the Assassin's Brotherhood becoming as big as it did and lasting through the decades and the centuries. So that, that was the one that kicked it off. It was very repetitive gameplay-wise, but I just had to mention it because of it being the one that kicked it all off. And it's... The reason it didn't make the list is because of the gameplay being so repetitive and just its age. It didn't age very well, but started this whole franchise that we know today. So we're going to jump into number one. Each of our number one picks, we're going to reveal those to you guys now. So we'll start with Showtime. What's your number one? Alright, my number one pick in the Assassin's Creed series has to be Assassin's Creed 2. By far the best game, gameplay-wise, story-wise. It introduces Ezio Auditore, an, an Italian assassin from the 1400s who was around during Leonardo da Vinci's time. Which Leonardo da Vinci is one of the most significant members of history. So, seeing him encapsulated in a video game was really cool for me. And all of the gameplay, like the feathers to collect, and all the fun stuff to do. It, it got a little tedious, but it's stuff to do in a game that was already full of amazing gameplay. And the big thing is that it kicked off the Ezio trilogy with Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed Revelations. Which are all three in my top five. So it just makes sense that the beginning of that trilogy would be number one for me. Because I I have strong feelings that Assassin's Creed 2 is the number one. I don't think that there has been a, an Assassin's Creed game that's better. I don't think there's been a whole lot of games in general that are better than Assassin's Creed 2. What do you got for number one? My number one, it was a struggle, it was a toss up for me. I think I have to agree overall that Assassin's Creed 2 was the best. It is the one that improved on everything 
that the first game gave you. It was less repetitive. The storyline was just great. Um, gameplay improved. Uh, you had a whole town management system at your hub. I mean, there's that. Then, of course, Ezio, the best character in the entire franchise to date. There's not been anyone better. I agree. And it improved on the modern day storyline with Desmond. It made it, it was more interesting, it was more intriguing. Whereas the first game, you were kind of just walking around this facility, sneaking around, trying to figure out what was going on, you know. But, uh, yeah, I just, I agree. Overall, the gameplay was better. You could improve on your character. There's a little bit of RPG element added in there. You could uh, buy armor and different weapons to improve your chances of winning a fight and improve your chances of completing the story. And of course, Leonardo da Vinci was like your best friend through the whole series. Uh, he invented all these contraptions. He improved the iconic hidden blade design and uh, he gave you the hidden gun, which all actually were created in a codex by Altair, who lived centuries before Ezio. He created the whole Assassin's Codex. I don't remember what it's called, but and Leonardo da Vinci, he created the flying machine, which you get to use in one mission, which was pretty fun. Um, I don't remember exactly what you were trying to accomplish in that mission, but I remember how fun it was flying through the skies of Venice and just that whole the whole time period, Venice, Italy, Renaissance, Italy. It was great for me because I'm big into art and art history and things like that. That was a huge, huge time period for art. Um, I could almost throw in... Assassin's Creed Brotherhood as being equal in my number one because of the gameplay. The thing it improved, it took everything from Assassin's Creed 2 and improved on it. It introduced the free flow combat system, which is a huge thing in the time it was released. All video games were doing it the Batman Arkham series, uh, Shadows of Mordor, things like that. It, was, it became the big thing to do the free flow combat system. Instead of just hitting the counter button and you're good, you can go from one enemy to the next, just slice them down left and right, you know. But uh, I'd say overall, I did enjoy the, uh, you could recruit a whole brotherhood worth of assassins to help you out in brotherhood, and, uh, but I think Assassin's Creed 2 is the mold that every Assassin's Creed game should follow, and they have changed it up a bit in recent years, but it, there's almost no comparison to it, it was just revolutionary, and it changed the whole game and it made it more relevant. I think if they would have just stuck to Assassin's Creed 1, it would have died out. But as soon as they introduced Ezio and that whole new revamp of the combat and everything that made the first game great and improved on it, gave you so much stuff to do, without that, there wouldn't be an Assassin's Creed series. So, any final thoughts after all that? So you mentioned Assassin's Creed Brotherhood at the same time that you mentioned Assassin's Creed 2. Right. Are you saying that you have a tie for number one? Yeah, okay, well, let's let's talk about that for a minute. Um, Assassin's Creed 2 was one of the greatest in my opinion. Um, I liked it better than Brotherhood for the storyline. Both storylines were great, but I liked it a lot better than Brotherhood. I feel like it had a stronger storyline. You had more places to go then in Brotherhood you were just stuck in Rome and you were trying to liberate Rome from the control of an evil family that was ruling over it and they were just kind of just the worst. But Brotherhood improved on the gameplay I feel like with the introduction of free flow combat system and they improved on the uh, customization a little bit. Um, and this gave you a little more options. The biggest thing with that for me was you could recruit citizens of Rome to join the Assassin's Brotherhood and join you in the fight to free Rome from the evil clutches of the Borgia family. <laughs> but overall, I think um, it is a tie I, because it's so hard. I'll have to choose... Uh, Assassin's Creed 2 for the nostalgia for the storyline, I think. Brotherhood did improve on the gameplay, but the storyline was stronger in Assassin's Creed. And I'm a big 
sucker for storyline based games. Uh, if anybody, any of you know, if you know me, that's how I am. But I think, yeah, if I had to choose one, I'm sorry I, if I caused any uh, confusion or, yeah, Assassin's Creed 2 would be my number one pick. But that's all I got. That's all I got to say about that. So what you're saying is you have a top five, and you had a tie for number one at, at one point there. Right. And you had two honorable mentions. Yeah. Honorable mentions don't count on the actual list, though. So you had a top eight. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is in <laughs> MySpace or something. Uh, yeah. Top five. Top Discussion. Five. Top five. One, two, three, four, five. The same, the same participation trophies. <laughs> you don't get a participation trophy just for making an Assassin's Creed game. You don't get an, an honorable mention just for that. You get one, two, three, four, five. Mm. Get your top eight out of here. <laughs> I'm Showtime. I'm DM. Thank you for joining us in our first ever top five discussion video. We got more coming for you soon. If you want, please like. Comment, subscribe, hit the little bell, get some notifications. We're starting out slow, but we'll be bringing more and more video content to you shortly. Uh, we plan on doing a lot going forward. Let us know what you want to see content-wise, and we'll try our best to get it to you as soon as we can, and as best as we can. We want the best quality content for all of you. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Spoiler Alert Network, and be sure to stay tuned.